Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing really well out there. Big, big episode today. It's a lot of numbers. I hope you're ready. We're doing a January recap on how I've gone with this business uh, in the last 30 days. It's crazy to think they're already here on the 1st of February. Uh, I've been doing this now for five months as a full-time online reseller, selling on eBay, selling on Facebook Marketplace. And really since I began on the 1st of September, I've tried to document every single step along the way right here on YouTube. And part of that is really trying to be transparent with my numbers. Not not only on a weekly basis, but on a monthly basis as well. So in today's episode, we're going to cover a few topics. Firstly, we're going to look at the monthly revenue uh, numbers, the monthly fees, the inventory uh, that I purchased as well, the sales platform performance. So basically, which sales platform worked best for me? and the final cash flow position. So when you're looking at your money in versus your money out, what's left over? Because I sort of class that more so as my paycheck, the money that I've got to spend in my own personal life uh, once everything's sort of been taken care of from the business perspective. So a lot of information today. I hope you are excited for it. I, I certainly am. I do love my numbers and I love doing these videos. So let's jump into it. All right, so the first one up, let's have a look at my monthly revenue. So all the money that's come into the business in the month of January, you'll see that I've been able to sell 154 items this month, and that's been an increase of 22. What you'll see there with that column on the right, sort of the plus minus graph, that's everything from the month of December. So just the prior month to these figures. So I've been able to grow an extra 22 inventory items sold. Um, total revenue is $7,029.64. Now, that includes the postage costs um, when it comes to eBay. That's sort of a combined revenue total. Um, it was up $863 on December's figures. So I was really happy there to get an increase in the revenue uh, by that much. Um, the average sales price was more or less the same. Last month, it was $40.94 today. Uh, for the month of January, it's $39.94. So I'm pretty happy with that average sale price. It seems to be pretty consistent uh, over the course of the journey. Um, cost of goods, $1,489. So funnily enough, while I've increased by $863, uh, the cost of goods has only deviated by $9.25. So quite a similar cost of goods there. Um, profit margin has increased from 72% to 73%. Um, so look, gross revenue, obviously great. Um, I'll touch into reasons as to why that's gone up by $863 in just a second. Uh, but $7,029, I think it's about $50 off my very best ever month on a revenue perspective. I think November leading into Christmas, I did about $7,065. So really not much of a discrepancy away from being number one out of the five months that I've been doing this. Um, so for what would normally be a pretty quiet month for a lot of people out there, if you are watching this, you, you're probably having a, a slower month because it is January. Uh, no other reason. It's just generally a little bit quieter post the Christmas period. Um, I've done a few things this month that I've, I've seen what I need to do and I'm going to talk about it in a second, uh, which has caused these numbers to go up to that $7,000 figure. So uh, because I put those things into place right at the start of the month, I've been really, really happy to see the immediate results there with an increase of $863. So if we have a look at the fees now associated to those sales figures, it was $7,000. That's great. But now we've got to take out eBay, PayPal. We've got to take out postage costs. So if we pull that table up and give you a look, eBay fees this month was $435.42, PayPal $94.75, and the postage cost was $948.40. So obviously making a few more sales, you'll see that the postage has gone up a little bit by an extra $126. Um, the total overall cost is $1,478, but you're probably looking at that going, well, that's interesting that eBay and PayPal fees were slightly less this month than it was last month, even though I had more sales. It wasn't due to Facebook Marketplace. As you can see by the bottom of the table here, eBay and PayPal's billing cycle is December 15 to January 15. So I've sort of based my figures here for the month of January off what that invoice was for the month of January. Um, I had a lot more sales come in post January 15. So that's sort of why the numbers are a little bit skewed there. But um, all in all though, if you are looking at it that way, the total fees for the month of January was $1,478 that we now have to take out of the $7,000 that I was able to bring in. All right, so now let's have a look at the inventory. Now, the inventory was probably the biggest part of January, which has seen obviously the changes and the increase in sales for what was normally a pretty quiet month. If we pull up the, uh, the table here for you to have a look at, I've been able to purchase 378 items this month, which was an increase in 127 
on the previous month of December. So just a really large volume increase in how many items I sourced last month. The gross purchase of those items, I've paid an extra $558 on inventory in. Um, so $2,606 I spent this month on buying inventory. Um, that worked out to an average price of $6.89 per unit, uh, which is actually a really good result. It's a drop of $1.37 on previous uh, inventory items that I've purchased in other months, or at least of the month of December. Uh, it normally is sat around the $7.50 to $8 mark. Uh, so to bring it down to $6.89, that's a really good result there, and I'm pretty happy to see that. I've still been pretty consistent with my furniture purchasing, so the volume, I guess, of furniture being bought around that $50 mark has certainly still been there. It's just that with my thrift shopping, I've been able to bring that price per unit down quite considerably. Um, so I think that's going to be a really key focus moving forward, is to keep getting items out of the thrift store, or even wholesale if I start to get into that. Um, just at a really low cost per item. If it can be around that sort of $5 mark, that's kind of where I like to play. Um, so inventory in, no doubt about it. This has been, I guess, the biggest say in, in my sales going up. I've just simply bought more items. It's resulted in me listing more items. I've got a new goal this uh, month, uh, pretty much for the entire year, to do 15 uh, items listed every single day for the month. Um, and I, I think that's simply been the reason why I've been able to generate a few more sales so quickly. Um, before, I was really only doing sort of 8 to 10 listings per day. That's almost doubled to 15. Uh, and that's why the sales have obviously gone up as well. So um, I'll continue to do this in the months to come. I really, while 378 is good and it's an increase of 127, I do really have a goal to try and hit 400 items sourced. Um, so there is still a couple more items that I need to be sourcing on a monthly basis to be where I want to be. Um, but I'm still really happy to get the inventory up to 378 items. Um, so inventory was a really good success and, and ultimately that feeds into some pretty good results on the sales front. All right, so let's have a look at the sales platform performance. So basically, what platforms am I using to get these sales results? And really, over the last five months, I've only really ever used eBay and Facebook Marketplace. And to be fair, right at the start of this whole process, back in September, I was using Facebook Marketplace predominantly and then cross-listing onto eBay. That has really flipped over the last few months. I think if you're just sort of like starting to get into reselling, I think Facebook Marketplace is a really good platform to just kind of get your bearings on the whole process of reselling. But then when you want to turn it into a business, I think it's a really smart move to be going to a major platform like eBay. So that's exactly what I've done really since about November. Um, I've gone pretty hard on eBay for about three months now, um, starting at the start of November. And as you'll see here with the table, um, the sales platform performance, uh, Facebook Marketplace is now at 24 items only. So uh, a little less than one a day on Facebook Marketplace. So that's dropped by eight. Uh, eBay has gone up by 30 items. Um, I've sold 130 items on eBay in the month of January. So look, really good there in the sense of 154 items sold. Um, obviously, you're paying more fees when it comes to eBay versus Facebook Marketplace with zero fees, which is again, when you're just starting out, you want to be on Facebook Marketplace for that reason as well. Um, but I would just really want to see these numbers increase to, towards the 200 on a monthly basis sold. I think if I'm sourcing and listing around the 400 items per month, I want to be sort of doing a 50% sell through um, and, and getting at least 200 items sold. So I'm still really happy to hit an all time high of 154 items in the month sold, but I really want to push that upwards to 200 in the months to come. And then the next one is probably the most interesting one for you guys out there. Uh, it is the cash flow. So I sort of deem my personal income, uh, I guess, after the business has been taken care of. So once I've received money in from a sale, I've then gone out and bought items to list again. Um, what is left over? That I deem to be my personal income from the business that I can sort of take away and spend on whatever I want to spend on in my personal life. So if we pull up the cash flow graph for you to have a look at here, the money in, as you would have known from previous uh, slides, it was $7,029. The money out, so the fees, the postage, the inventory that I purchased, that worked out to $4,084. So the cash flow kind of left over for this month of January was $2,945. So that's kind of what I deem as I've got left to play with myself personally. Um, I also obviously do this YouTube channel as well, and it, it will be a really crucial component to making this a full-time living for me. Um, and it's obviously a big thank you to you guys on, on these numbers that you're seeing, but I've been able to do $318 in YouTube ad revenue as well. So that's really a really strong uh, second source of income and will only continue to grow over the next few months. But 
when you add the two together, the cash flow figure from the business, the YouTube earnings, that on uh, basically on an annual basis, if I brought that in every single month, I'd be on the equivalent of a $39,150 salary. So with those numbers, while you know, being five months into it, they're not too bad. I'm, not, I'm certainly not disappointed with those figures of being at around a, a $39,000 salary. But I have said on this channel for a very long time now that for me to be able to move out of home and tick off all these annual goals that I've got in place, $100,000 in revenue, um, obviously move out of home, get a storage unit, um, all of these goals that I've got for this year, I, I really need to hit that first milestone of $50,000 sustainably as an annual salary. So what I've learned from all of this is that I've been able to get up to $39,000 in sales by sourcing around that 380 items a month and listing 15 items a month, but I'm not quite there yet. I'm at 39. So to get up to 50, I'm probably going to have to source about 450, potentially even 500 items, hold the same sort of sell-through rate and get towards 200 to 250 sales on a monthly basis, just roughly speaking based on my sort of average cost of goods sold. Um, so when you look at all the figures, I've got to level up a little bit more to get to that $50,000 a year paycheck. Um, YouTube will only hopefully grow more subscribers, more viewership, more ad revenue. If I can get those numbers up towards $1,000, that's ultimately only going to you know, help supplement what I'm earning from a cash flow perspective from the business. So I do really class YouTube as a really key priority in this journey. Um, but I, obviously, I'm pretty happy with where things are at on a slow progression front um, for the business as well. So a couple of key takeaways that I've written down um, for the month is really just, just been those two key things that I've already spoken about. This month, I really changed how many items I sourced and how many items I listed. I didn't buy any different in, in the sense of the items that I was sourcing. It was exactly the same items. Obviously, the cost of goods, I was able to buy it a little bit less, which which helps. And I increased my profit margin by a percent as well. So there's some really good key indicators there of a positive month. Um, but it was really just a case of obviously listing more and buying more for the month. So I think I've just got to continue to do that, maybe even a little bit more so, like I said before, to get myself up to 50,000. Um, but also too, the other one as well was just I became a lot more efficient in the month of January as well. So I really streamlined what I needed to do on a, on a daily basis to get the job done for the month. And those key processes were more or less just writing down on my notebook here every single day, just three key processes that I just had to do. And an example of that would be on a Monday. A Monday is a postage day. If you don't do anything else on a Monday, then do 15 listings and take your post to the post office. That's really all you have to do. That's the key priorities for Monday. You can you can flap around and do anything else, but the two things that I need to get done on those day on that day is postage and 15 listings. So that's what I write down for myself. And when I tick off those two goals, I know that I've sort of done a tick for the day. Um, Tuesday, I then have a priority to do my 15 items again and then go out and source and I try and purchase 15 items at a minimum. So I've got another day's worth of sourcing um, under my belt. So that kind of flows throughout the entire week where I've got two or three key items that I just need to focus on. And it really kind of allows me to just you know, hone right in on what actually needs to get done to get the results. Really, it's just sourcing, listing, and getting out to the post office to deliver, to deliver your items on time. They're the three major priorities with what we do. It becomes a very simple game when you look at it that way. Um, so I've, done, I've just simply just done that. I've not wasted time on things that aren't important this month. Um, I've been able to streamline my processes, and I think that's really helped me as well. So there it is, guys. Um, a lot of numbers. Big episode uh, in the sense of those, um, but um, I, I think I'm slowly progressing towards, I think a, a, maybe a, an end of financial year scenario of being able to move out of home. I think over the next sort of four to five months, that 39,000 you'll see in the months to come could get towards that 50,000. And then that's where I'll feel a bit more confident to be on my own two feet and live out of home and, and pay rent and, and all the rest of it. So um, there's a bit of an update, a bit of transparency for you. Uh, hopefully you have enjoyed it. Let me know how your month went for the month of January in the comments below. I do love to hear it. Let me know what your strong points and weak points were. Uh, let me know what you're trying to work on as well because uh, I'm trying to learn as much as you guys are. I'm just trying to document my journey to help you out there, to inspire you, um, to, to keep on charging and keep on uh, getting the results. So hope you've enjoyed this one. Let me know if you enjoy this style of episode. Uh, if you want me to keep doing them, I certainly can. 
Um, but uh, yeah, that's a good look at, uh, at January on the business front from my end. And uh, hopefully there's just an increase in numbers in the months to come. We'll see you in the next episode, guys. A little bit more lighthearted on Thursday when we do a trip to the thrift. I'm looking forward to that. We'll see you soon.